We are here in Kensington Palace in our new exhibition, Victoria, A Royal Childhood. In this exhibition, what we've tried to do is to represent the rooms that Victoria grew up in and to give our visitors a sense of what the spaces would have looked like where she spent the first 18 years of her life. We're currently in the Red Saloon and it's where Victoria held her first Privy Council session on the day that she became Queen in 1837. So the document here is a proclamation signed by Queen Victoria and it's the first thing she signed as Queen and essentially it's an oath to the Church of Scotland at the time. The National Archives is really proud to have the document here on loan to Kensington Palace uh, which marks a really significant moment in the life of Queen Victoria. She had just turned 18 and had found out in the night that her uncle, the King, had died um, and she was now uh, Queen. So it was upstairs, a room just above us now, where Victoria went to sleep on the 19th of June, 1837. And then she woke up, she was woken very early in the morning by her mother and told her that the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Lord Chamberlain were here to see her. And she went in in her nightgown and in her diary she says she was quite alone and she's very keen to emphasise that for the first time um, she was alone. It was actually uh, Melbourne that originally met her to tell her that she was now Queen of uh, the United Kingdom and he was a very significant political figure in her life um, and a real influence. He'd written her speech that she would give to the Privy Council and she felt a great confidence in him. So he talked her through how the morning would progress and then at 11.30 she came downstairs, she walked through the room just here and came into the Red Saloon, again quite alone. She was met by this great dense crowd of 97 Privy Councillors, older, very experienced statesmen, politicians, uh, senior members of the royal family. Here we can see the signatures of many of the members of the Privy Council who were in attendance with Queen Victoria. It's quite overwhelming just to look at the amount of signatures by essentially all men compared to Queen Victoria's one signature as the woman in the room and yet also as the most significant figure. Really this document shows her moving into um, a very political role and a role that was in a very male dominated sphere at the time and so this marks the beginning really of her role and reign. So she came in, she was seated at the head of the table um, and there she delivered her declaration. She signed the Protestant oath and she swore in each one of these Privy Councillors. I think many of them were approaching this with real nervousness about just how young she was and her relative lack of experience. All of their testimonies afterwards speak to the fact that she held herself with a real kind of confidence and self-possession. She delivered her speeches with a beautiful clarity and, um, and calmness. I think perhaps there was an, an element of them feeling that she was young and presentable but also probably malleable. But of course, they'd quickly find out that that wasn't the case. And over the next year or so, she would really prove herself to be a very strong character. It's really exciting to have this document here being loaned from the National Archives back in the very room where it was originally signed by Queen Victoria um, in Kensington Palace. We hold many records at the National Archives um, and to reunite them to the original location is particularly powerful. What's so special about this document is that it's the first official document that Victoria signs as Queen and we see on it her familiar signature but now it's followed by a very sort of tentative R for Victoria Regina.